Commission. So calling meeting to order. Welcome everybody. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, approve the minutes. Does anybody have any uh, omissions or corrections to the minutes from the last meeting of May 8th? I just had one which was just a grammatical. Um, I had one clarification on Farm Pond. That Mr. Gennetti has been doing readings for the past last five days. I, I inserted water level readings. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, and that's the most substantive thing. Okay. Any other? Oh, actually, one other. Just thing. on the discussion on Chestnut Lane on the last page. Uh, it says the the lot 12 well. A 15 will get. A 1500 plug. I thought it had already been installed, that it wasn't pending, that he had already installed it because that's that's why the, the discharge was reduced. reduced. Okay, yep. So I, I changed it to the lot 12 well had a 1500 plug installed to reduce the discharge by about 90%. Yep. That's that, those were the same. Okay. Any other corrections? They look good. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? All motion to accept the minutes as corrected. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Administrative discussion. Uh, Amy, you want to bring us up to date on the vacancy? Yeah, the need for the revote is is not correct, but they the board of selectmen did just this evening approve Rachel Robinson for appointment. Okay, great. Um, so she's got to get sworn in, and hopefully she can. So do you sure. think she'll be here at the next meeting, June 5th? Uh, if she can get sworn in. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, let's go through Certificate of Compliance 227 Newtown Road, Acton. That, that was the uh, the dock yep. which got installed. I took his oh. land speed record for getting his uh, Certificate of Compliance. I went out there, and you, got, you can actually almost tell from the uh, picture, there's actually some nice stones right Oh, yeah, at the bank, it? Yeah. which makes for, you know, a, a great entrance, yeah. That's nice looking. All right, so do I have a motion for Certificate of Compliance? Uh, I'll, most, I'll make a motion to issue a Certificate of Compliance for 227 Newtown Road in Acton, and, um, uh, site number 204852. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Okay, there you go. Accounts. 11 Lincoln will hopefully be in soon, but they didn't make it for tonight, so. Okay. Accounts payable signature. Oh, yeah, it's that time of year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we need two people. Two of the four of you. <laughs> <laughs> to sign. To be uh, elected as the people who can sign. Oh. You can nominate yourself. Andrew. I did enjoy the job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't mind being it. Okay. And Anna. There we go. Two. So I need a motion made by? I move that we elect Andrew and Anna to be responsible for signing accounts See, Anna's easy because she sits right next to me. Right. I'll, I'll get a closer seat next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they're nominated to a second. Second. Okay, All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Thank you for your service. So I actually just need one of these. <laughs> need you all sign that. Well, then I guess Everyone I or just the two? Everyone, correct? Everyone. When does it start? Immediately? Uh, well, it hasn't changed, so. <laughs> we'll just keep rolling along. I, I assume that's for the fiscal year. Sorry, Jim, you're not here, but I know you're watching. I can't sign your name. <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah, so that's all lined up. Okay, next on the list, most important, is our coordinator, Amy, is going on vacation June 21st through July 2nd. Just to let you know. All right. We appreciate that. No meeting while I'm gone, so. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Carefully. Uh, conservation, yes. <laughs> conservation Commission budget, June 6th FinCom meeting. That was mostly actually for uh, Jim. He's going to go with me. Okay. To make sure there's a budget transfer to cover the rest of my salary through July Excellent. 1st mm -hmm. as well as expenses. Okay. But we might need some more uh, sign, uh, people's names. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, who would like to address the park and recreation joint meeting? Um, Tim Mikowski uh, just sent me an email saying at the last Park and Recreation Commission meeting, the idea was brought up to have a joint meeting between Parks and Rec Commission and CONCOM. Um, so I don't know if you were amenable, if you wanted to just have me talk to them or do a subcommittee with especially open space. Oh, open space. I'm looking at you because you cover all bases, <laughs> again. Um, well, or if you had any, any ideas or want to think about any ideas. Where I we think to extend an invitation so we meet again on the 5th and then yeah. the 19th if they wanted to maybe come in first versus last if they wanted to do that. If yeah. that didn't work, then we could um, pursue Something other else. avenues for joint yeah. ventures. The one so thing that has... It's nice because we're all here. Yeah, exa exactly. The, and you didn't think about it. The one thing that was has been in the back of my mind is whether or not it would make more sense for Park and Rex to do the community garden. Oh. Because they can have you know, like the official sign up they can do you know the booklet mm. with everything in there Might make some so. sense okay. Possibility. okay speaking of that all the plots are booked i assume uh yes they are okay and hopefully they're hopefully growing i planted growing. my things way too early i've got to start over i know mine hardly have come up because it's been so cold okay 735 land use permit application for the littleton boy scout troop 20 proposed use of long lake park for camping come on up So do you want to tell us a little bit about the date of what you're looking for? Is anything different from previous applications? No, it's June 23rd, I think, is the date on the form. Um, if you want to just review it for the commission, that'd be great. Yeah, June 23rd to the 25th, uh, it's, uh, you know, we go Friday night, and come back uh, Sunday, usually out of there by 10, 11 o'clock at the latest, uh, typically. Um, you know, they get up in the morning, have breakfast, pack up, and leave. It's uh, going to be mostly younger boys, I think, this time. That's why we're going across Long Lake instead of canoeing out in, like, the Concord River or somewhere else. Um, and uh, so we're doing the canoe training now, or not now, obviously. It's too cold and rainy. <laughs> but uh, we did have a meeting at the lake uh, last Tuesday, and they'll have a couple more. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll canoe across the, the lake. They'll camp and uh, already let the fire and police departments know that what's happening. And they were like, that's fine. Okay. And they follow LNT, so pack in, pack out? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Do we, I know we discussed it in the past, do they have to have a certificate of uh, insurance for liability for the town to release the town? I think the only people you ever asked that of that I'm aware of is the uh, the canine rescue. Well, anyone that's people? camping on the pro on town property overnight or using it. So it's I, a, I, I haven't use. seen anything. That effect. I don't, I don't, I don't recall us giving one when yeah. we camped in the field. Um, That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was part of a discussion I, though. I, that will let's just check, double check with town council to make sure that. I have no problem know. getting the council to send me. The, the, you yep. know, we uh, Beaverbrook uh, asks for it as well when we camp up there, okay. and, and their cabins, fire, and, yep. and there'll be a fire. Yeah. Can't, can't, you know, and, uh, and um, um, camp stoves and mm -hmm. right. yeah, the usual. Yeah. Accru well, it maybe makes sense just to plan on sending it. Right. Yeah. The yeah. certificate insurance, whatever. Yeah, no problem. I'll have okay. Maddie send it to me and I'll forward it mm -hmm. to you. Okay. What area of Long Lake Park were you guys looking at using? Uh, it's the same spot that we used per previously. Uh, there's a site across that I can't give you the exact location because honestly, I didn't camp there. So I don't know the exact <laughs> spot that they go to, but it's the same one we used last time. Okay. It's about halfway, if you, if you look from the beach, mm -hmm. it's about halfway down the lake on the left. So it's like around the Tarone Loop Trail, that area, like yeah, off of Colonial, Colonial Drive. Yeah, where the Colonial Drive comes. Okay. Down. Yeah. It's a fine spot for camping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have I don't know, fifteen, maybe twenty, okay. between adults so and you're, boys. So your your permit's up to twenty. So you feel then comfortable with we'll that? Be, we'll be zero cars. under twenty. <laughs> okay. Andrew, you're familiar with that. Do you want to make motion? Sure. Get that so, signed for them. So I'll make a motion to grant 
the requested land use permit for Long Lake Park for June 23rd through June 25th for the local Littleton Boy Scout Troop number 20. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Oh, it's already pre-signed for us, so we're good to go. Does, mm -hmm. Does the committee have to sign that? Conservation Commission? Yeah, who signed that? <laughs> uh, no. No, that's you know what I'll bet? That looks like the police. No. Does it look? It's probably the chief. Could be, the, could be the chief. Oh, it is the chief. The chief yeah. signed in both places, apparently. Uh, I can sign below the chief, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just write LCC afterwards. I, I didn't even actually get to meet the chief. The secretary or whatever took it into him, so. There you are. Thank you very much. Amy, do you want to yeah, I want to. Can I get a Absolutely. scan of that, or if you want, keep it and email me. The, it, that would be fantastic. That works for yep. me anyway. And Perfect. I will get the um, insurance uh, yeah. sent. I'll have Maddie send it to me, and I'll forward it to you. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good luck. Good, 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 good weather. <laughs> okay, 7:40 on time. One Sawyer Lane, 204-739. Come on up. So this <coughs> is mentioned as a project update. Yes. Uh, I am almost done um, putting grass on my property, you know, covering all areas, trying to prevent erosion, just because now I saw the pattern on the water flows. And uh, I just want to know in the wetland area, basically my, uh, the sill fence is, is there and the, um, what do you call this? What is the other thing that sits on the yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have not, I have not transgressed that line. That line is there, but beyond, but that is that coincides with the 25 feet from distance the from the wetland. Um, and there's a long finger of that, you know, area that set back. I should have brought a map. So. Can you grab one? I didn't. Yeah. So sorry about that. I guess it came from my office and should have had one. Um, so, uh, well, just if we can, we'll wait until Amy grabs that because yeah, she transcribes the notes for us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. basically, I want to know what kind of vegetation I can put in the wetland area okay. because there's an easement that goes through my property, okay. and just to add a little bit of privacy. Because okay. one side I have the harbor road, one side I have the easement, uh, and the back side, you know, I have a backyard, front yard of another person that oversees my backyard. So, I'm just going to add some trees around the periphery. Okay. Whatever, whatever is permissible in the wetlands. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, his request is he'd like to put some plantings in there, so that's why he's for privacy. Right uh, along the road. I assume that's yeah. 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 I remember when you pointed that out on, on the sidewalk. I think the area was between his the driveway and the we'd be inclined to put in pollinators and things that this is a little bit weapons. dated but it's probably the best plan to actually mm -hmm. look at i think <coughs> so you're you know, here's harvard road sawyer mm -hmm. your drive so you're, you're thinking about right there sure. yeah and all this and anyone has my turnarounds a little different now instead of putting it out here we yeah. be, there was a recommendation of the guy who did this he said this is a he said this is going to be really you know it's going to be bad for the wetland also he said you back out here, this grade being so steep, you know, mm -hmm. many cars mm -hmm. will end up down there and mm -hmm. it will wear down faster. Mm -hmm. And then I compromise my lawn here, I said this is better. And it seems like it's better. And all what I did, I think I had, a, I had an update. Can you use this paper? Please. Is that your update yep. one? Yep. Yeah, this is, an, um, this is a modification I had requested. So it more looks like this, uh, except the turnaround is this way. So I have this this area which is kind of a lawn or this you know, plants that there. Yeah. Yeah. That also I have gravel there that also stops in. So the swale as it was here, the the way the pattern the water comes down. If at all it comes now, it doesn't come now because I added gutters also. And whether the gutters drain here, we have put appropriate you know hay bales and I put gravel there. And we, and we looked at that. So that takes away a lot of the water that doesn't come from here. Like pure water goes down to a pipe and it comes out in you know, proper appropriate places with appropriate certificate of compliance, okay. So my question right now is what do I plant here on this side? The water actually comes if at all it comes, it comes down my you know, driveway. The driveway is sloping down and enters here along these arrows. Now there are already yeah. some trees there. 
So would, would you be willing just to let them grow up? Yes, yes. I mean, there are some pine trees which I would leave where they are, but um, there's a lot of these, uh, this invasive, um, this multi-rosa species. They're like these thorny bushes. Mm -hmm. Multi-flora Yeah. Those, those aren't good. <laughs> They can be a good barrier. Huh? Nobody wants to would dare to <laughs> cross them. That's I will true. keep some of them, but uh, it's more in a haphazard way right now. Mm -hmm. I will try to have it more like towards the road, you know. He put some arbor whiteies if that's allowed, or some more of an evergreen foliage kind of thing. I know the home lawn. Um, with the blight, I, would, well. I wouldn't do the home lawn. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they have a blight right now. Um, Carl, you have any suggestions for that? Also, certainly think of pollinators, <coughs> things that are going to attract, you know, bees, butterflies, yeah, blueberries, roses things like that. Yep. Roses. Mm -hmm. roses roses too. So, you, are you looking for a big, like an, uh, you, look, you say you're looking for privacy, so you're looking for evergreens Bushes. that. That's what I was thinking for the thing. At least right. you, you five to six feet, you know. Five to six feet. Yeah, yeah rhododendron would be a nice. Uh, Actually, I'm planting rhododendrons on this side already. Yeah. I don't know. But I didn't know, which is... Rhododendrons probably do well in shade also, so mm -hmm. it's a shady also because... Yeah, they do well in shade. How about fruit trees? Fruit trees are, f are fine. Though, you get buds, you get... Yeah. I mean, this but area... That would be a mm -hmm. good choice because... Or, or how about a service berry? Oh. Service berries are a good size and they are... Definitely good for wildlife. Uh, look at the choices, but could you they tell flower. me what I should exclude, what I should not? Because I walk out of this room, my landscape will tell me this thing and that thing. No birding should birds. I exclude? No, <laughs> no invasives. No. I'll no. tell you, I, I, I have a, a list of pollinators, which be. goes from you know, trees, shrubs, plants mm -hmm. that I can send you. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll add the rhododendron because I don't think that's no, on there. Grasses. And then no. if your landscape architect wants to you know, substitute something, just, just run it by me real quick. Okay, but is there anything Nothing like the tall ornamental grasses. You don't want things like that. You want things that are going to be native to the area, okay. minus some of the invasives. And if you want it to oh. be a year-round screen, you, you, work, you stay away from the deciduous ones. You want them. Sure, sure. Obviously, that will have yeah. leaves on it. Rhododendrons have leaves on them. Right. Although they kind of curl up a little bit. But right. Mm. right. Yeah. Now, we appreciate you, you asking. Um, I think you'll find some, it'll be helpful from Amy's list that she forwards to you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So are you talking like, what, maybe five or ten at yeah, the most? Yeah, whatever will, whatever will fit on that side. Is it possible, okay, let me ask this question. Suppose if I want to put a fence, I might put a fence on the roadside, but what about that lane? Can I put a fence there? Not on, not on that side, because that's in the buffer zone, but you could do it on, on the opposite side. On the opposite side, I could yeah. put it. And the buffer zone will, uh, it's, a, it's a 100 feet or what, how, how much do I Specifically with that fence, we'd want you to stay out of the zero to 50 in particular. Zero to 50, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, mean I think the driveway is probably a pretty good break. Mm -hmm. The buffer zone does go past the driveway, but a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I, would just use the, I would just use the plants as you're screening. Yeah, I will do yeah. that because yeah. they may be even cheaper to do that way. And yeah. I don't, I'm not, I mean, this side, if it gets too bad, then I will use a I mean, I mean, put trees here also. I just want to keep it all green. Mm -hmm. Green, <laughs> green is good. I want it, <laughs> and trees will look good also. So, about what happens to the silt fence finally, when I'm all consolidated, every where grass grows and uh, there's no, should is it possible to take it out after the certificate of plants? To take out before the silt fence. Yes, yes. Yeah. What point will I be able to take it out? Do what do I have to do? As to built first. As built as you've, as you've, as you've, as you've made significant changes, yes, so you need yes. to have your engineer come in and site your driveway, okay. where your driveway has moved, uh -huh. your house. Uh -huh. um, then Amy will come out, do a certificate of compliance, and then at that point you can, you remove, can it. remove it mm -hmm. because everything would have been vegetated at that point. Yeah, what what I what in this case, what you might want to do is do your as built. I can come out and take a look, then maybe take out the erosion controls. So we can make sure it gets restabilized sure. before doing the certificate of compliance, because it, it's mm. yep. they're they're kind of buried. Yep. Yeah, it's a I mean great time to do that. When do you think you do your plantings? I'm doing them right now, Good. but not not on that side. Yep. I'm doing a garden. Well, I actually did the grass also on the septic. It was 100% grass now yep. after the grass seedlings. That's great. 
you know, <laughs> sprout. <laughs> okay. I hope this feather can good, help good that. Good time but, to do that. So yeah. Um, yeah, I have one question about hydro seeding. Is hydro seeding allowed if there are some patches which are hard to mm -hmm. grass? Yes. Hydro seeding yep. will be allowed. And then one related question, is it always good to hire a contractor to do hydro seeding? Isn't there a way, I mean, is there any horticultural some method that the town recommends that people could do themselves? Just put I mean, seed, you can I mean, certainly apply it, you can certainly apply it yourself. You can yeah. self-seed it. Yeah, so yeah, you that, don't, that you don't that have to hydro seed it. But, okay. Yeah. The hydro so you can seed and hay down. Yep. Or you can look even on YouTube. I'm how just you asking a suggestion because down. I asked many people how to hydro seed. It's no, some sort of a cool thing to do hydro seed. seed so let me make sure that your any of those plans have to go back into yeah, that sure. folder. Thank you. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so did I uh, do anything diff Yeah, I pretty much complied with that. I've not done anything different. But you Is have changed all? the driveway. Oh, yes. I have, yes. I have, I have that Which sounds like it worked out to your and advantage, and but you still do need to do a I will certificate do an of built, yeah. compliance and get your ads built on. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anything Great. else? Nope. I, no Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 750 Durkee Farm updates. Um, so we're going to start with 204 772 for the road, lot 7. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Bar Gidro with Hancock Associates, along with Dave Cowell, our yes. wetland scientist, Sherry Gould, attorney, uh, Dave Guthrie, and Chris Finnerell, um, owners and, and applicants. Uh, so I had a meeting this morning with Amy, and we had circled PDFs of um, a couple okay. of different items. And we'd like to start uh, with our temporary uh, sediment plan for Spur Street. Okay, so the order of our hearings for this evening, we're starting with 204-772, which is the road, lot 7. Lot 7. Well, the road. That's the second column. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess to give you an update on the road, uh, street sweeping is ongoing. Uh, additional oh, yeah. waddles uh, have been installed in locations behind curbing. Mulching is uh, kind of applied at driveway. Uh, curb cuts, um, catch basins being inspected and cleaned with respect to the fill sacks. Okay, can we stop there based on observation today? Can you tell us how that's ongoing and when it's been done last? That was uh, last Thursday, I think it was. Up there. Okay. Okay. I so wrote it down in my book. I don't work like Okay. So based on observations <coughs> today, which email uh, photos were sent to Amy. So as you first enter from Foster Street, You've got a silt sack that is maintaining water in splitting, so it means that it has to be cleaned. So it's got a barrier down below. <coughs> so you've got, um, we would ask, and then down at your corner of spruce, <coughs> you've got debris that has covered the inlet as well. So we ask that that's done on a, a regular basis. Where's the second one? Uh, down where your corner floods. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah. Spalls and kind of across perpendicular. Right across. Yeah. So you're driving down directly across. <laughs> um, staying on that notice of uh, or that order of information, uh, it's two pieces. I guess one is, is the Spruce, Spruce Street uh, plan before you, and the second uh, piece is infiltration. Do you have large three. plans that you want to share with the committee? Uh, I gave Amy two this morning. I have another set here. <coughs> Yeah. 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 It's easier to look yeah. at that. <coughs> <coughs> so what we had proposed um, during the last meeting was requested that we develop a plan uh, and, and size these temporary sediment basins uh, according to 20 areas, and that's what we've done. Um, we have lot 27, lot 26, and lot 22 proposed right now uh, as temporary sedimentation basins. 
These are typically sized on a half inch storm. We've listed a table here for a half inch, inch, and then what the actual volume is and uh, what freeboard is above that <coughs> one inch storm. So these are uh, a lot larger than what is typically done and required. And our intent is to make sure that we're not going to create any uh, any kind of discharges from these during the event. Um, the watering locations are shown. Uh, there's scrub baled areas uh, overlaid by uh, Marathi filter uh, bags. So essentially what happens is when the event uh, has gone by, um, it, should these basins need to be dewatered, basically a skimmer would be put in, um, in the standing water and then uh, a pipe run to these locations, okay, yep, which is on a second page. <coughs> If you look at a temporary sedimentation basin, and then basically just a straw baled area with filter fabric allowing these to, to draw down. Um, the collection from sub base when the topsoil is removed is going to be done via swale either side, and the swales will be equipped with straw bale uh, check dams uh, additionally. So, and the timing on this, we, we'd really like to get going uh, and start constructing the sub. Uh, sedimentation basins uh, as soon as the commission feels comfortable with us doing that and the thought is uh, they're only going to be around for a month or two months I and mean, how, how quickly will binder go down on screws probably like probably in two months two months <coughs> so in two months binder will be down catch basins will be installed and all of these will go away and we'll clean up the site accordingly okay. I think it's helpful if you we pull the three lots um, asking me to pull those so that we can see what was approved there originally and then to look at the impact to make sure that we're not doing a greater impact on any of these lots as what was originally permitted. So the limit of work has been defined and held uh, as the same uh, through the notice of intent process. So 27 was not uh, covered under an order of conditions. But you do have open space and your outfall would then potentially go into the detention basin which then goes into the wetlands so jurisdictional you will find on 27. so if your skimmer mm -hmm. outfalls and comes into what is under our regulation now <coughs> that is that falls within ours so that's why we're asking to look at 27 to what was approved prior to see what you're proposing to make sure that it's not greater than what was originally proposed with respect to impact to the land and to make sure that you're not in the open space as uh, as a part of the open space um, getting into there and regrading it is only it if it was under the original what was approved on 27 so that's why i'm saying can we look at 27 and you can assure us that you're not that if you're working in the open space it was approved to work in the open space so if you look at, at this <coughs> drainage easement right here um, there's a pipe that's going right through the open space and going into... So where does that the say drainage easement on this plan? <coughs> it's represented by this dash line right here. Where's the legend for the... Uh, that specific note may not be on this one. Okay. But that is what the dash line represents is the drainage easement encompassing the pipe going from the catch basins at the end of spruce uh, and heading into basin two. So the intent of any work within the open space is going to be returning it back to the existing grade that's out there right now after and then restabilizing the I agree to that. If it was originally proposed work in the open space. So I think it's a little bit of a challenge when we get plans at the Monday morning of the meeting that are not full plans for us to be able to review and as we had stated before to make sure that Green has looked at this as well as we discussed at the last meeting. So I'm sure that as you were doing this, especially when we get back into the other basin, we want to make sure that they were part of this discussion. So do we want to go to 27 and look at that or do we want to look at other ones? Might as well start. With Let's go ahead. And, did you bring this plan or do you want to look at we only have a smaller plan. It would have been on the key plan because it was a nose of intent. So did I take that back or you still I think it? we put them back in the folders. <coughs> this is the key plan. 
like a part of the notice of intent. Right. So usually what we do is we do overlays of if we're going to do an impact to a lot that already has a permit or order of conditions on it, any substantive change would have an overlay. So that's what, in theory, we're asking you to do now is to assure us that there's no more impact to the open space or anything that's in our jurisdictions for the wetlands as well on the other two. Mm -hmm. So with respect to open space, uh, again, we, we have a drainage pipe that's going through here, a sidewalk that's going through here that was grading that was proposed. This is a temporary sedimentation basin that will be removed and then pipe installed, sidewalk installed um, according to the original plan. And again, that open space will be regraded to existing <coughs> grade and um, vegetation established. Which so is we, we, on that plan, so where is 27? Thank you. And what was originally planned on that? Uh, so right in the open space section, this is a drainage easement right here. There's a, a manhole with a pipe to a flare down section and basin too. Yeah. And then a sidewalk um, right in that same general location, kind of meandering. And the intent of that sidewalk as approved by the planning board was to allow field conditions to dictate the exact location of where that's going to be going. Um, so we're showing intent, not necessarily. But we're, what our, we are concerned with what gets um, altered. So open space, when it is approved, is approved in the state which it's in. So we just need to make sure that it fits open space intended to be like a wildlife corridor mm -hmm. or open space to remain, that it's our obligation to make sure that it stays in the same that it was approved for. So that's why we're asking what was, what Anna was asking was what was originally proposed there. Because here I see um, on the original plan you do have a grading line. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But a single grading line, and and that ha of course the house. So, um, I mean, is there any way you can shift shift the basin to right where the house was going to be put? In? So you won't have to do the grading into the open space. Twenty-seven wasn't um, doesn't have the order of conditions on. But it didn't right. have a so house, did it? Yeah, all okay. the lots of those. Um, so if we if we want to shift that slightly north, I mean, we could certainly do that and make that adjustment. So you don't impact the open space? Um, the, any way that... be the last house that's built, and by that time, you won't even need that because your binder will already be in. Correct. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. We're, we're only talking about a, a couple of months to our first um, and then binder will be down. Okay. Let's go. The next one we'll look at will be... 26, correct? Mm -hmm. So 26, we will note, is in the buffer zone. Amy, there's a order for on there. So here again, what we're trying to make sure is that the basin is in a smaller template than the house, or equal to, and not have any additional um, potential for discharge or disturbance to the weapons. Yeah. So the, lim the limit of work, which is establishing basically yard areas on these plans, and as you can see by where the conservation markers on the key plan were proposed, are being maintained. Um, so as long as we're staying outside the sill fence line, which is the limit of work line with this basin, and is being represented on both of these plans. Right. But you'll note that on that plan for the house, it doesn't have a dewatering basin discharge that potentially, under unknown circumstances, could come into the wetlands. So you, you're putting a discharge on a property that was not originally designated for that. As a part <coughs> of construction for the roadway itself. I mean, these dewatering plans were never developed as a part of the notice of intent process for the roadway itself. And but we're you're within the buffer zone. We are within the buffer zone. Can we remove it? The dewatering is, is outside of the 100. The basin itself is, is inside the 100. 
No, but what I'm suggesting is when, when so you're so you're in a corner. So you've got the wetlands over here and the wetlands here. Sure. Come down and you're discharging potentially into here. So you're building something that potentially could discharge within. Not sure what your scale is within ten feet of the hundred foot buffer. Right. Right. You've got your wetlands flag. So your closest wetlands flag is D2. D2, D3, D4 would be where the buffer, the 100 foot buffer is projecting onto lot 26. Is this one of those basins and structures that is over designed? They all are, correct. The intent is to not have to dewater these basins and have this inactive operation when it's raining. It would be after the fact. As I said, to get the plans with no notice and no review, I think it's a challenge for the commission to make an infield dis decision or out of field without seeing it. It's not easy trying to sit here and make these decisions. Where's the original plan again? This is the key plan. Did I look at this lot when it was originally planned? Mm -hmm. It's 26. So they're within the 100 here. So this is the 26. So, <coughs> so on this here, is this the 100 line? That is the 100 foot buffer. So that's this here. Yep. So it looks it looks like a pretty similar impact in terms of the basin, I think. And if this this is discharges outside of the hundred, but I don't really understand how. Oh, do you have a detail of the um, discharge? Only yeah. on the second sheet. One sheet too. Uh, so the discharge is basically to a. Is that a yeah, it's going to. No, it's uh, it, it no, it's meant to. S it's hopefully not going to discharge. It's hopefully not going to discharge just during. Over, over topping, right? Then, well, then it will just not. No, it's either. Hopefully, hopefully it's, stay there. But that's it, what it's it stays for, right? there. Correct, correct. And then uh, the intent of the dewatering is is basically a, a man-made depression. We're using straw bales and, and filter fabric to a, to capture all the sediment. Um, Oh, so this square here mm -hmm. is what it's going to yeah. be. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it would be a controlled release. It would be a pumped release, not a overflow. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be pumped, but yes, yeah. it's a controlled release. I mean, now that's the intent behind making these basins as large as they are. <coughs> you don't, by any chance, know what storm you ended up designing to, do you? We given the size of the basins? We went beyond a one inch of that. Uh, yeah, so by like four or five times. I was curious what storm that. That would correspond to it. Yeah. A, a one inch event is just under a one year event. A right. two year event is 2.7. So we're hovering around three inches. So can yeah, it's you pretty likely these days. tell us, <laughs> so when you hopefully not in a two month period. What was approved <laughs> for the house? What your elevation was for the finish grade and then tell us your elevation of this basin. So when the basin comes out, you'll have to fill it back in. What We're actually going to over excavate in the location of the foundations. Um, so the bottom of this basin is two foot cut from existing grade and in the footprint of a house, it would be a four to six foot cut. So it would be excavating this out. Right, so you're excavating. To put the concrete in the ground. Into the water table. Oh, is the water table at like that height? I'm sure it, it will is. be at that height. <laughs> Definitely. That in the water table. Because you're so close to the wet one there, yeah. We're trying not to create more wet ones on the site. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable commenting on that without further review from an engineer. I'm certainly not an engineer. It's in lot 26. Mm -hmm. 
So you're suggesting or you're proposing that this temporary... Uh, well, you're, you're just... There's the potential to impact the wetlands, and I believe that if you look at the water table, as we come down that site, you're closer to the wetlands. You probably have to do an exploratory to see where you're at for water table mm -hmm. at the depth mm -hmm. of where you want to be. We have testing across all of these sites. We've approved septics on all <coughs> of these sites. So, so where's we, your we, where's we, your we, deep hole test hall near in the center of this? Uh, I don't necessarily know if we have it directly in the center of this, nor are soil testing is required as part of a temporary construction practice. If this was an infiltration basin, if it was an extended dry detention basin getting into stormwater management standards, yes, this is a temporary construction sedimentation basin to exclusively detain silt and lab laden runoff uh, so that it does not flow uncontrolled into the erosion control line. So you're not doing anything more than what excavating the foundation would have done under your order of conditions? Is that what you're saying? More or less. You said you were going down deeper. You said you were going for down the foundation. Oh, we for the foundation. Correct. Not for the not, not for this. this. Yeah, this is less. This is less. Yeah. We're basically scratching the topsoil. But and you're building the, up area. the area. If, the what's the area of the basement compared to the area of this basin. It looked almost equivalent. I don't think that those necessarily are direct, uh, directly related because, again, our limit of work on it, it hasn't changed. So but the entirety of these lots were proposed to be regraded and seeded throughout the entire subdivision, not to have it remain as existing. So what you're seeded. saying, if you provide an overlay of what is approved to what you are asking, there will be no difference? In terms of limit of work, no. Because the limit of work line is the silt fence line, and that has not changed. No, just because the limit of, just because the siltation fence is here doesn't mean that you can grade further. That's what I'm saying, is that you have to look at the area that is being impacted needs to be equal to or less so what with was not, not additional grading. What was represented during the notice of intent process that the limit of work line and where the conservation markers, <coughs> the two different types of markers, signs and posts, mm -hmm. were going to be the establishment of the lawn area themselves. So while we may not be showing contours, that area was always going to be regraded and right, seeded. Right, but you have, an out, you're, you have an outlet structure coming Temporary. into your deal. Yep. Also coming into your dewatering, which was not there. And the dewatering is above existing grade and is essentially straw bales on top of the ground overlaid by sil uh, filter fabric. Filter fabric. Yeah. I defer to the commission. Well, my impression from looking at the um, plans and looking at this basin, it looks approximately the same <coughs> impact as what they were going to do originally. This would be my, you know, my only concern is, and, and frankly, uh, the one-inch storm is rather small, I think, these days, and rather likely to occur, so I would think we plan on having that probably overflow, and whether we're comfortable with that is the question. But then you'd have to do, look at what you have for impact back here. But if you do look at the calculations, it holds way more than the one-inch one storm. Correct. If you see the calculation table on there. Oh. <coughs> but not significant if you had three one inch storms back to back. If you were to look at what we've gone through any spring, you have more than one one inch storm in the month of anything. Yeah. Um, so, how long, how temporary do you think this will be? So it, it, it's the amount, yeah, the amount of time for, Too much. for yeah, binder to go down. That's not that. And, and I just want to add how they've really tried to be very responsive to everything that, that you and Amy have gone out to see and corrected it right away and gotten right on it. So so your best case, would this would be June yeah, but we're July. not here to monitor. I know that. So I know that, we've spent an enormous amount of time on this site. Yeah. So this is not what we're here to do to, as we addressed meetings ago to have two of the four um, mm -hmm. basins be basically not working and in failure, this, this is unacceptable. So what we're trying to make sure going forward is that we're not creating more hazards to the site. Right. I, I think we recognize that in the sense that you, uh, 
at this point, having you out there as often as and having the issues that have come up is that this is an attempt to get ahead of it and, and proactively prevent um, some of these issues from happening again. Um, it, these are construction best management practices for um, uh, dewatering or, or water control, um, the, the detention basin. Well, I guess the, why are we doing it that these always have to be where they're impacting the wetlands? Why not let them impact another lot temporarily? Versus right. letting them impact the wetlands. Is the topography, yeah, and because the water, the but water naturally is going to flow down gradient, and your your wetlands are located down gradient, which is where the water is. It's is. Yep. You, there's no point in putting them up gradient of, of where the areas are that you're trying to control the water. But you can move this basin a little bit, and it will pull it out of any danger zone of the wetlands. Yeah, we can certainly shift that one slightly north. Yeah. Okay, we have to move on. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Um, so that would be Law 22. Up here. Do you want to give that back to Amy? Amy, that goes. Do you want to talk the commission through 22? Uh, so 22 is going to be the same as 26 and 27, where we're essentially oversizing a temporary sedimentation basin located on lot. Uh, this is kind of the low point uh, on phase one for the back half of the hill. Uh, the high point is um, basically in front of lot 22, uh, down to the rock wall. Uh, so this because will be the we area. are in re relationship to the farm pond. So the opposite up, up side. Yeah. The, oh, the okay. big hill kind of yeah. on the back, yeah. that, that high point, and then yeah. back at the end of Frazier Street, where the pavement stops, mm -hmm. that's lot 22. So we're we're trying to burn up an area there um, to to take runoff. Mm -hmm. Different <coughs> construction. This is yes. pleasure. Thank you. So do you want to share with them what was um, proposed? Yeah. So lot lot 22 is is here, um, basically, and so the house footprint is generally speaking where. The basin footprint was. You want to draw in red on your plan as if you were doing an overlay of where the house and septic is. So the house is right in this general area, and the septic is up near the road, up in this area here. Oh, yeah, that's not. Uh Constructed. This yeah, part of the road is hasn't constructed. No, so yet, the right? pavement the pavement ends back here. This is the farmer's pond. Right. Um, and this is lot lot fourteen <gasps> where the house is on yep. the hill. Okay. And the pavement basically <coughs> stops in front of that lot. Okay. So it's just carrying pavement to the intersection and then up, uh, up and around and to grind. Back into the yeah. Okay. So why don't we move that one up too? Just to go that way or that way? Well you got the well, you got the, the, no, well, you've, the, got the one. you've got the wildlife quarter. So You're saying to move it closer to the road? Yeah. yeah. Which we could certainly do. We, we can shift that one <coughs> um, closer to Spruce Street. But I think we have to get these numbers looked at from someone else. Yeah, I agree. Wasn't Green going to look at it? Anymore? To look at that right mm -hmm. <coughs> so my my thought on uh, having Green look at these numbers. It was agreed to in the last meeting. Yeah. It was referenced in the meeting minutes. Yeah. And my thought is. So let me just read it for you. <coughs> so actually, your council can read that. You'll see there, which was agreed to at the last meeting. Spruce, wasn't no, yeah. that was for infiltration basin three. Yeah, not specific to this plan. Oh, we can certainly run this through green uh, to have them look at our, our volumetric calcs. But, but my then they can look at the soils as well in those proposed areas because you said you have you have those. We have testing and yep. I think we would just need to make sure that the soils are what we're hoping for. The soils. Uh, my thought on these three areas would would be that the review of the volumetric calcs and the test with data 
could be done concurrently with us starting to burn these up. Uh, at the end of well, the day, well, you're going to have to get us new plans of where these are going to go because we've already just moved two of them. <clears throat> we've moved them. This one slightly. We still. We yeah, still, still have to have five. plans. So. <coughs> Yep. This this actually said nothing about green reviewing on the Spruce Street to get it started. If you look at the Spruce Street comment there, and what it said Basin, was that oh, for he Basin was, Three, that that was for Basin Three. But if you go further, then it says mm -hmm. what what you the commission had agreed to on Spruce Street, okay. and essentially said as long as he showed the, the temporary um, locations with the mathematical calculations of how much water there would be, that you would allow Spruce to get started with two with temporary it, basins, not three. Typically done for construction amendments such as these two temporary basins. I think if you read, if you just read a little further, I think it says, as long as he's watching. Uh, it says they do know the soils in the area because of the septic system exploration in the area. They may trench along the way down Spruce Street to direct flow to the two temporary basins. Sir, they that's the right place. It says Spruce Street. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. If you go to the end. Of How about council read it? Yeah out loud for everyone. It says um, from the beginning. <coughs> Applicant asks that they be allowed to start Spruce Street now that Basin 2 issues have been resolved. They still need to put in the last bit of erosion controls in the Lot 15 area. They intend to use 22 and 27 for temporary stormwater basins. Work will be in the area of the farm pond but not in the wetland or currently flooded area. Widening and improvement of grounds lane will be tied to occupancy permits for houses along Spruce Street. They expect it to be 60, 90 days to get spruce ready for paving, and I think today they said two months. They pointed out that the SWPPP is typically designed for construction amendments such as these two temporary basins. They do know the soils in the area because of the septic system explorations in the area. They may trench all the way down Spruce Street to direct flows to the two temporary basins. They do not expect a lot of runoff from the roadway subbase. They'll size the temporary basin on Lot 27 so that it would be large enough to not <coughs> overflow into Basin 2. I assume that that's mm -hmm. sizing is what caused them to go to 26 right, So then you would well. never have an outlet, yep. They pointed out that they want to be very protective of the permanent basins and do not want to do anything that could affect, if, uh, that could affect their function. Commission pointed out that they also need to figure out why the foundation at Lot 5 is so flooded, as that could also be affected by Spruce Street work. They plan on letting the Lot 5 flooded area to dry out by itself and not dewater it at this time. Um, commission concurred that no work on spruce can start until the temporary basins are shown on a plan and supporting analysis started. So today what they're doing is showing you the temporary basins on the plan and the supporting analysis provided. What they're requesting today is that they be allowed to get started on spruce um, well, you have, to, you have to agree to the supporting analysis that's presented here. So we're asking for two. So two were asked for, and tonight we have three. And two have, <coughs> are going to move, is what well, I'm hearing. <coughs> the original one <coughs> said 27 and 22 were the planned. So any reason why you did the third one? Uh, we just felt it would be a better location to direct runoff. Just, uh, we have a swale going to the Lot 22 on this side. To continue it, we just super elevate the entire road base to this side and then only restrict 27 for uh, the lower portion of Spruce Street down here to take runoff. Down. Could you eliminate one of them? I mean, we can, if, you, if you look at volumes, if we lost Basin 2 and only did Basin 1, we're still retaining uh, the one inch event, and we can look to expand it further into 27. A one inch event. Mm -hmm. Just, it happens all the time. Yeah. In June or July, though. Yeah, we're, we're coming out of spring, and we've, we've provided historic rainfall data, um, and one inch event only occurred twice in the last four months. No, we're talking years. Like, yeah. if you were to look at the, the past June, July, so what we're talking about is now mm -hmm. looking at Frequency May, and June, July, yeah. you look at historic data for Littleton over the last years, and that's that would be your data, not the last few months, because the last few months wouldn't support the data. We've had excessive amounts of rain. So based on that, excessive amounts of rain in the last couple of months, and when we had two Wait. events that exceeded a one inch. How many did we have back to back? We had one week where we had rain all the time. Correct. 
and, and we did not have back-to-back -back one-inch events. On April 1st, it was a 1.7. And that's four. why we've had to dewater on the site. Is one of the reasons. All right, let's carry on. So what would the commission like to do? Well, so what did you say? You could el eliminate one. We could. We, I mean, if, if, if there is, if the commission would feel more comfortable with just using 27 in lieu of 26 and 27, we can reconfigure But you still have 27. to move 27. Yeah, move 27 mm -hmm. in and then mm -hmm. enlarge it if you need to, if you're eliminating that one. Okay. What, what's to be gained by eliminating one? I don't know. Though. I wouldn't say you can't just enlarge it. Well, if they move it further away and it won't impact the open space, that could be it. We're going by what was requested at the last hearing. Wouldn't the third pond increase our BMP? Th yeah, that's my thought. Yeah. I'm, I'm just failing to understand how, how sticking to the letter of two re requested at the last hearing. I, I feel like well, if you, if you want to do the three, then you have to make assurances that there's not going to be any dewatering into any of the wetlands. Right. So you can be within the zone, like close to the 100 foot, but the way it's presented now is that your potential outfall would be into the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm fine with keeping three, right. but you have to make accommodations based on what you've heard this evening of moving some of them, that they're, the way that they're presented may not be ideal. Just like with here, what Carl had said, to move closer, closer to the road. Right. Which we can certainly do. So that's 22 and 27 might get shifted. 22 yeah. and 27 okay. would both generally be going north. And we like well, the outfall 26, 26, so you have to make sure that the outfall is not going to come. So on all of them, you need to make sure the outfall is not going to be generated into, because here you're already, wetlands flag, D2. I mean, you're already in the buffer zone. Comments? I agree with everything that's been said. I'm, I'm if you want to limit to two. Um, What's there? I think what they would like to do is they would like to stay at three, correct. is what we're hearing. And we'll shift, and shift further, shift further shift request, them. and we will um, add additional detail or shift these outfalls as, as need be. I mean, we'll be happy to revise this plan, but we, we really would like to start to work you. on this. The numbers to get looked at. I think if, yeah, if we said... Time. We haven't had any time to look at this. Well, you've had well, one hour. I don't, th <laughs> I don't think <laughs> we so need any more. No, we typically don't. We typically don't allow an applicant to provide information of the day of the meeting and have a decision. That's something we normally don't do. I understand that, but how quickly do you think you could have your plans, the new plans, submitted? Tomorrow. And then I think you need to have a subcommittee or someone to, to look at this to see, um, to look at the calculations. Can Amy do that? I, I can walk her through it. It's a straightforward calculation, it's area times one half or With one the soils. But the, the soils don't matter because they're not looking for infiltration. Correct. So we'll, we'll, we can certainly provide that data. high right water. Yeah. High groundwater. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we do care about and that's what is reflecting on this plan. So we can... We okay, can but you'll have to show that data. We can data. put that data on this plan as a part of that report. So what I'm hearing is that you'd like to go forward with the three basins based on modifications to all three. There'll be a in-house review of calculations, uh, today's Monday, by close of day Thursday, because we have other things that are going on this week in the office. Um, and if Amy feels comfortable with that, with perhaps Carl or someone else looking at this, um, 
with Amy that we would approve this subject to um, you guys being comfortable with that? The commotion? And then you could start as of um, you know, Friday. Thank you. Okay. And who wants to look at it besides me? Carl. Carl does. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> you've been volunteering. Uh, what time? Well, two numbers. I mean, you got to be. Able, you've got to be able to look at numbers. Take place. I'd have to be there, correct? Because otherwise, I oh, we do it some evening, I assume. Mm -hmm. We can accommodate your schedule depending on. Conference. Yeah. Someone give me information. Do you even have green I think it would be. Well, that's what we have asked for. I think. But that, I think it would be much easier to have green. Well, well, I think initially yes, and. I'm thinking that it would be easier. You just wanted a revision on the I calculation and mm -hmm. less that. I think we yep. can. I'd feel more comfortable with that, Brian. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think with timing, if we can, they might not be as fast though. Well, what, I'm not sure how nimble they they can be. Right, so to be the green or green. No, it has to be. We would not put the onus on one person. By the green or Amy and Carl. Mm -hmm. Can you check with green? tomorrow and let us know well that's what the caveat does right it allows well, but that's well. he just said that this is going to be ready tomorrow tomorrow's Tuesday so they have to be in her hand by really noon to noon Tuesday in order to try and have this looked at okay. if not then it would hold over to the next hearing where we would have had the peer review at that point is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah, that's fine. What are you doing tomorrow night, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have other two. Here so have it to me by time. noon Tuesday, and I will see if Green can turn it around by Thursday. By the, by the and, and if day. not, then you and I are the fallback. Right, um, so we still need to address uh, enforcement orders and we still need to talk about your other basin. And just point of order, I think Amy made a motion that never got, uh, Anna made, sorry, Anna made a motion that never got acted on to what Yeah, to in this. order for this to move forward by Thursday, we need to approve it. Need to approve <coughs> if that's what you all feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So Anna, you want to go back with your motion? Um, well, I mean, it, it's in the minutes. I don't know if you need a formal sure. motion because it's, it's sort of a process okay. as much as anything. Um, but if, 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 if you can formulate a motion, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to uh, accept um, the plan uh, as... Yep. It, yeah, it would to be it, it would be conditional would, pursuant to right. uh, conditioned on review lesson. by by right. either Carl and Amy or Green. And um, it's the new plans. The new plan as amended. Let's see, a plan no, that, that, that that will be presented by noon tomorrow for the new plans. A name of the plan. Let's see, erosion and sediment control plan phase two number one will be amended and presented. Um, presented as on Thursday by Thursday um, and if if acceptable to either Amy and Carl or Green then the, those plans shall be presumptively approved tonight and, yep and work can commence on Spruce. what day is Friday every day it's 26 <laughs> well, they were saying the work can commence Thursday. as soon as that approval is achieved. Well, that would be Thursday if it's approved. Well, it depends. The 25th. Maybe it could be or approved by Tuesday night. Who knows? I mean, I doubt you're, are you that nimble? Okay. You can Thank you. That. And so, do I have a second? You have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank okay. you. Okay. Let's address the uh, findings. <coughs> Uh, for infiltration basin three. Mm -hmm. So last Thursday we were out there. We did some exploratory excavation and we witnessed we dug deep dust pits in the east and the west um, inlet side. And generally speaking, what we found were. Uh, Do we have plans of that? Yeah. In the memo. So There's a party of that. That was the one that was sent with the memo. 
Correct. The printed in font. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> we, yes. we just, we, uh, there should be some, you should have some in the package that so you handed is out the, This is the email package that came. Yeah. And this is the same. Okay. Carry on. Uh, so we dug two, two <coughs> test pits, um, and what we had found was there was a rather thin but substantial layer of organics and silt that was excessively um, wet, uh, covering the entire bottom of the base. And as you got into the place fill, which is place topsoil, it dried out very significantly. Uh, and then at a depth of about eight inches, we got into a substratum of parent material that was also, it was damp, but it was not wet. There was no weeping of groundwater. There was no standing groundwater in these holes. Um, it was redox present at a depth of 30 to 36 inches. And all of this, this field observation um, is indicative of the water sitting in the basin as we've seen and not going down into uh, the soil. So based on that, what we're going to do is we're going <coughs> to issue a specific cross-section of how we want this to be reconstructed. Typically what's going to happen, we're going to go in there, remove the top 18 inches, 24 inches of material down to virgin uh, parent material build it back up with select fill, and then we're going to figure out exactly what we want to top it with, whether but it be... But you're keeping the, the actual bottom that you created, no. or, you, or you're going to go right past through, through that? Through that. So the top 8 inches is topsoil, no. we're going to take out probably 18 to 24 inches, anything that's underneath mm -hmm. that material, bring <coughs> an import of select fill, and then we'll, we'll um, either loam it or we'll specify an engineered media uh, to take vegetation. The key point is that this water, that this basin receives water during storms because we have two inlets and the road is there. So whatever construction practice that we do needs to immediately be uh, affected. Um, so, so where will that water bypass while during construction? We're going to... The way that I'm thinking reconstruction activity works is we're going to identify a window to get in there for a day or two of dry period. So you still have to have a backup? For? In case it does in rain. In case it does rain. Um, we can certainly provide something. Okay. Will you have that for the next meeting? We can have that for the next meeting. So is that depth that you're getting down to the loony sand? Exactly, are? yeah. So the top eight inches is what was topsoil. And then underneath that is loamy sand, and we're just going to pull out the top, probably foot of that material, and, and replace it. Replace it with what? That's what the spec is going to be on our next plan. We haven't you said fully engineered. engineered. It, it'll maybe? be select fill, so it'll be a sandy material, um, probably with a lot of gravel in it, and then the topsoil itself, in lieu of just using the same material that was already uh, installed once. Maybe we import some engineered fill or, or what have you. So that that will be fully detailed on the plan. Okay. The one that has the oh. This one? The one that we were just referencing a minute Oh, here. Ago. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So just going back to enforcement orders, just so we make sure that we talk about 7, 9, 10, 13, 14, 30. This is not the plan. The one that said the NOI key plan. Key plan, that was the term. Uh, so let's go ahead through, work our way through so that we have touch base on everything. So seven nine is we talked about the road. Seven nine. Seven. Any um, updates on seven, which is uh, adjacent to the far pond? Right to the side. The yard was regraded. Has it been seeded yet? It was reseeded. So seven is seeded. Taking. While we're on that, do you want to address the pond levels? The pond levels haven't really changed that much. They've gone up half an inch, down half an inch, quarter inch, kind of stuff. The usual. It hasn't really moved up to the water. It's taken a half inch. Half inch to an inch. Well, I think we're saying to go down, but we're adding water to it. Yeah, happens. with the rains. We seem to go down. Yeah, it's going down. Okay. Uh, let's talk about lot nine. 
Well, nine. Uh, one line is not like to stabilize the backs and the side towards the, the, the detection pond three that we have that issues with. Yeah, and we so. discussed at the last meeting you were going to potentially put in, you asked for an amendment, but we potentially was going to do a notice of intent with the wall and the um, driveway, and you were supposed to do an overlay on that and mm -hmm. discuss that. Yeah, do you want to maybe jump shift a little bit and go through those plans? Is that by is it a no, is it an amendment or so wait so we're not bringing any new into it all we're asking is what for an update was it an amendment or is it a new notice of intent well there's three things there's field change amendment or new notice of intent okay so which is it so i i would call this a field change but brian's got the numbers of what changed in that was the flipping of the driveway. Yeah, right? Correct. flipping Correct. of the driveway, changing house footprint. So we have issued um, revised NOI exhibit plans for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 7, 14, and 30. Um, so all of these lots here. Grouping them um, as they relate to their specific resource areas, there's a net reduction of impervious areas in here. Generally speaking, driveway locations, house footprints flip, nothing got closer to the wetlands. It was either moved further away or maintained at that same distance. So you're submitting those for review? They've already been submitted and I had a meeting with uh, Amy this morning. And the commissioners, those were submitted in the packet today? Yes. That's what okay. these are? Mm -hmm. oh. So those were the original exhibit plans updated to reflect um, what's what's out there. Okay. Question? Yeah. Is it possible that we could do uh, construct that septic system in the front yard of number nine, seeing that we stabilized by the pond and stuff? We're not really going to be impacting that area. Nine is under an enforcement order now, and they've just submitted paperwork, which would have to be reviewed. So it would have to get reviewed first. Wait, in this in this plan, it's showing where you want to put the septic, or so is it different? Yeah, the it's plan. it's still in the front yard, but it's under an enforcement order, so he can't go forward until this has been reviewed by by I, mean, I thought the determination was if Amy decided it was a field change then then we'd be okay to proceed was that right but did you have a chance to look at that today I mean this just came yes. today yeah no, no we sat down for about an hour this morning oh, okay. and went through these so and, we and I, I concurred that nine did not result you know obviously things switched but I mean, Brian you got the numbers in front but of you. the impervious surface within the hundred isn't it Decrease, right? It was a net, de yeah, was a net, yeah, net decrease, decrease okay. uh, in all but of these three areas. That's going to happen in a number of, of lots. <coughs> right. So I just wanted to, to see if, if you all agreed that right. so what whether they're red line amendments or new notice of intent. Okay. Red line means basically it, we're done so they could go ahead and do the septic on nine. Uh, and amended notice of intent means, or amended order conditions would mean um, new notifications of butters and all that stuff it's a more formal process than who knows intent so. so specifically you're asking for nine to go ahead with the change and the septic system so we would have to allow that you need to vote with that within the order the enforcement order to allow that wait lot nine uh, i see lot a nine is right here impervious area is increasing not decreasing of 72 square, 72 feet. square feet. 72 square feet, yeah. But when looking at the resource area and the entirety of the buffer zone tributary to that resource area, it's a net reduction of over 1,000 square feet. Are you talking about the whole resource area or that particular lot? We're talking about um, these three lots. Yeah, we're looking at the lot specifically, yeah, we're looking at the lot specifically look not the for lot. the resource area because you can make it up somewhere else. Right. So these are taken on lot by lot basis. Yeah, so it's a net increase of 72 square feet. But it's up, to, it's up to the commission. I so it could be. <laughs> <laughs> it's under enforcement order now, so um, any change, you don't have to vote on any change. So then you'd ask them to fill a notice of intent. Yeah, it seems to me that's you know where um, we have to go. When when <laughs> we look at this globally, 
in what we did. The intent of the notice of the original plan is, is still being met. Um, we've reduced the footprint size of the house and shifted it. We flipped the driveway and Closer. that... But you flipped it to the opposite we side than what, was opposite side what was approved. Than what was approved on the plan. And, and this specific lot, yes, has, has 72 square feet of impervious. When you, you look at the buffer area in the general uh, for this wetland, we are reducing impacts to this wetland across these four lots. So looking at what we're proposing throughout these, this is the lot that has the basin on it as well. <coughs> That's under review presently. The top part of the grading for the basin, right. not the basin itself. So Infiltration yeah. basin three. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so move the impervious now away from the wetland buffer. Is it on? Is this wall. seventy-two square feet of impervious within the buffer zone, or is that within the total? Buffer zone, it's no. the wall. So we so what right? about total? I mean, it would be a combination of the wall and the house and the driveway. It's and because house. they moved it's the driveway. Now they have to build the wall, but it's on the wetland side. Right. So originally the driveway was on the right. <coughs> they moved it to the left. Yep, I understand. But in order to support it, they have to build the wall. When they didn't have to build the wall because it's on the other side, it's not right. the grading wouldn't need Correct. it. Correct. So the wall is in relation to the septic design because of how grading works out on this wall. The wall was not on the original plan, correct. correct? Okay. So it was approved with the septic there and the wall not there. Correct. So something changed without an amendment to us and it was built. So it's up to the commission. We've got to keep going, guys. Yeah. So what would you like to do? It's, you can... Right, what is the 72 square feet relative to? That's the wall. No, but I'm saying a 2,000 square feet. I mean, is that where you can oh. put the field change collectively? Is that the 72 square feet? No, a uh, percentage? Yeah. Increase? Correct. It, it's on, it's, it's on that plan. Yeah, I just read from it. What was originally proposed and what's... Yeah, it went from 1900 to 1974. Increased by 72 feet, so he's... Over 1900 square feet. Out of 1900. Out of 1900. Was that like 8%, I think? I, I started doing the calcs and I realized what that was just... Points. So a field change can accommodate... 10% would be 190, so it's less than 5%. A, a field change is, is entirely up to you what you consider significant or not. Oh. I mm -hmm. usually look at either 10 or 15% or if it is actually going to change your order of conditions. And field change oh, is changing. usually in the field mm -hmm. with knowing what's going on, that something has occurred, not that something has changed from a plan by actually making something, actually changing the house or right. changing the driveway. That was done by the developer without the knowledge of conservation. I agree with that, but you did ask us last week to meet with Amy to see if she felt it was a field change. Right. And it's 4%? 30, 30, 3.7. 3.7%, <laughs> is that? I mean, it's pretty minor. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it is not unusual for a subdivision like this for the houses to start <coughs> shifting. Flipping driveways can be another issue. The rule of thumb I use is either like, you know, 10 to 50%. Is that significant? Okay. Um, and would you change the order of conditions? Because if you're not changing the order of conditions, all you're doing is accepting a new plan. Okay. Commission, what would you like to do? You need to vote if you want to let them do it. Well, it's already done, isn't it? Well, whether you're, whether you're, whether you're going to approve it or not um, as a field change or not. I guess I, I would and, make a motion. And just this will set the tone for the next, I don't know, five lots or whatever it is. Well, you can set the tone right now by so not, that, allowing, that's, that's what I'm not saying. allowing any right. as well. So you can approve it and just say this is your one opportunity. I would make a motion to um, approve it as a field change since the change in impervious cover is less than 4%. Three point, what did you say it was, Sherry? 3.7 is what I get for the math. And that will be made up somewhere else in your global calculations. Correct. And we have a net reduction of 1,006 square feet in relation to these lots in this resource area. <coughs> so 1,006 square feet plus 3.7%. Mm -hmm. All right. So we need to, a motion okay. has been made. We need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
still need to remind that we still have existing order of conditions, I mean uh, enforcement orders on 11, 13, 30, and 14. Um, the commission would still like to make sure that we're addressing uh, a little bit of the elephant in the room with the farm pond mm -hmm. and what we're doing with that. So because it is collecting more water and um, the biology is, everything's changing in there. So the birds are happy. <laughs> Lots of ducks. Lots of ducks. Yeah. But, um, and so just to be clear, lot nine septic, go. Uh, no, start. we're moving on. So we still have, no, we approved one. We've, oh, so yes, oh, nine, 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 yes, yeah. not the others. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Septic and wall, is that, go back yeah. to work on lot nine, is, is what you're saying? Is there a diagram of the wall? Sorry, yes. revised exhibit. Plan. And that was submitted. Okay. Yeah. It's two and that wall tall. has a permit? Building permit? Need Less than four feet. Oh. We just had a rather large one collapse in town <laughs> without a permit. In wetlands. What was that? Chestnut. Uh. Oh. Okay. All right, this will be continued to June 5th. Can I just get clarification on that? That's back to work on that? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. So you can take up the rest of the lots next yep. time? Yep. That's what the continuum of the whole meet. Yep. Oh, yeah. Correct. <laughs> no. Yeah, continue. Yeah. Okay, next continued public hearing notice of intent 204 850 305 Foster. Sorry to keep you waiting. One problem. Okay, so right. this is for septic right. system upgrade to replace an existing field system. If you can, for the record, introduce yourself. Yep, my name is uh, Chris McKenzie from Whitman and Bingham, and uh, this is David, David Cannon, Cannon from Parsons Commercial, Parsons Commercial Group. Group. So, um, from the last time you've seen this plan, there's been some significant changes. Uh, I'll go over that really quickly. Uh, initially, this the septic system. There's two sand beds shown here. Initially, this was designed as one large sand bed located here taking up a lot more pavement. Uh, the initial Board of Health review revealed that a uh, bed is limited to 5,000 gallons per day. This system is a 6,400 gallons per day, so I had to break it up into two separate okay. beds. Um, that's, that's the reasoning for this setup. Um, and those beds have to be a minimum of uh, 10 feet apart. I've got them 16 feet apart because I need room for all the piping and sure. D boxes and all that stuff in between. So, um, mm -hmm. so we do, uh, another issue on the site uh, that the uh, owners were concerned about was uh, we were going to have to remove a large amount of pavement mm -hmm. and then repave over it mm -hmm. and that was going to require uh, fabric over the system and of course new pavement and it was getting it was going to get pretty crazy expensive right. uh, so as an alternative we decided instead of having two stacked up over each other this way we'd put them uh, down this way. We had already done testing with the idea that we may end up having to use this area uh, when we did the initial testing for the entire site. And it's all your property, right? Yes, the property line is located here, mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and coming up here, mm -hmm. and it comes way down to 495 over here. Um, so there's, there's lots of other room over here, but there's a lot of ledge and a lot of areas we didn't want to mess around with down there look kind of scary. And this is the 100, right? <coughs> right. Here's the location of the wetlands. That's a 50-foot buffer. The orange is the 100-foot buffer. Uh, initially, the system that was located here uh, extended way down right to the 50-foot buffer mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, mm -hmm. we've moved the, all the work area further away. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we're probably impacting a slight bit more land area further down on the site. But this is a lot flatter area. And, a lot less uh, chance of any uh, uh, problems in the future with that. Mm. And is this, these are existing contours right here? Yeah, these are existing contours. And uh, one thing I noticed, um, you're all aware that oh, the, the pavement comes downhill this way and there was a catch basin located back here with a pipe going out in that direction. Uh, we explored this area. This just kind of meanders into some woods here. There's a, a earthen berm that comes across from this rock ledge here goes all the way over to 495 so there's no water getting through this way to anywhere if it could it would wrap around and end up down in in here 
Um, it may do that still on the ground, but it's not going to do it on the surface with that berm there. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did do after uh, uh, Amy and I went out and, and walked the site and she uh, raised a little bit of concern about the, the piping that we were going to take the flow of water coming here to a catch basin and running it back and tying it into the existing pipe to this existing outlet. Obviously this water was initially going down here and now we're sending it over here. Um, what I, 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 part of the research I did after meeting with her out there is I took a look at the original uh, plans out here, which are hard to read, they're, they're very faded and stuff, but it's clear that the contouring went like this, and like this, mm -hmm. and like this, and this is all fill that was mm -hmm. put in for the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So I think the initial right. ground out here, all the water went that way with a small amount maybe coming this way, but mm -hmm. I actually still have it set up for uh, some swaling to bring water around this way, anything that we can't quite catch to send down this way we're going to send that way. Um, so that pretty much covers the revisions to the plan. We obviously we extended our hay bale to wrap around. A suggestion was made by Amy to maybe extend some silt fence or something around this edge. I don't think we'd be opposed to that. There's wetlands on the neighboring property. It's probably 150 feet uh, horizontally and, and probably about mm -hmm. 50 feet down. It's, it's a big drop from here down to there. Mm. Um, or maybe not 50 feet, I might be exaggerating, but uh, I, I don't think we'd be opposed to running a silt fence uh, continued around there. I do show a stone wall here. It may turn out that uh, uh, a contractor may find that the better option here would be to um, uh, cost effective wise would be maybe to put a poly barrier in at about 15 feet off of the system and then make a little bit steeper slope here and avoid the wall entirely. Um, that's certainly a possibility. Um, this is still under review by the Board of Health that's what as I was well. Ask. Okay. Um, so they haven't uh, given final approval of it yet. That's outside of the 100 anyway, too. So. Yeah, all yeah, that work is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. like I said, there's a wetland way down here, but it's, it's on the neighboring property. It's way down there, though. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, well, that wetland's work probably is really limited to this right here. Right. Yeah. But this wetland is probably connected to that other, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it all connects down. It's, there's a big wetland down behind over here. Mm. That's where the 300 Foster Pond goes yeah. under the road. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's right, from across yeah. the street. Uh, there's other catch basins further over here in the parking lot that have outfalls that head down over there as well. Okay. So would Looks you like to keep this open through the next meeting while you continue to meet with Board of Health? We don't meet until, we meet June 5th. Mm -hmm. um, it's your prerogative whether you want to close it, but if you close it and then there are changes to this, you would have to reopen this. Right, right. Um, when do you meet with the Board of Health again? I am probably not going to have to meet with them. Um, mm. they, w they should be able to review and approve this plan without anything from me because we're not asking for any special approvals or variances from them. Mm. Okay. So they should be able to approve that. They have to go through their process, sure. but they don't need me to come in and present anything to them to get their approval. Hmm. The agent reviews the plan, makes a recommendation, they issue the permit. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to do if um, it doesn't change or it does change? We meet again on June 5th. I would leave that up to you, Dave. The, the, the issue being, of course, if the... We usually say if, if you don't have that in hand, it's, it's somewhat more conservative to say, okay, just keep ours open, knowing that we feel as though you've been diligent in your remodel. All right, so if we keep it open and the Board of Health approves it, do we need to come back on the 5th or? Um, no, we, we would carry, as long as nothing changes, we can close it and um, vote on it on the, f on the 5th if the, if the committee, yeah. mm -hmm. the commission feels right, comfortable with it. Yeah. Amy, do you, uh, uh, Amy, do you feel like they've addressed your concerns? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. As long as we get a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we would, yeah, no. Yeah, we would yeah. tell you. But um, if all of a sudden, the planning board comes back and makes another change that somehow changes that, and then you'd have to refile. Right. Uh, the chances of a major revision, like we recently had from mm -hmm. the Board of Health, I think is slim. He kind of hit me with the things that he thought were really critical out here. Uh, I has, can't he, has he seen this? This has been submitted to the Board of Health. I, I know he's a busy guy, and I don't know if he's had a chance to look at it yet. Um, we usually encourage applicants to wait if you, uh, if you if, unless you said that you know you're meeting with Board of Health tomorrow, you think you're going to have approval. We want to get started well, now. I mean, we've but been we've been at this for a few months now, <laughs> so I, you know a couple more weeks. I don't yeah, think there's no, a lot that's of time in that. June fifth. So we would continue yeah. to June fifth, and this would be more of a um, yeah. 
Yeah, we would open and close it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. 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 Great. So but yeah, it's an improvement over the yeah. last one. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. We know it took you a lot of time, yeah. but I think it'll work out better for you. So is that a slightly different revision from what I have? Should not be. Okay. Uh, this is dated the 17th. I don't think I made any changes from the ones that I handed you that day when we met out on the site. Look at the, uh, sta uh, the engineer's stamp. Uh, 517. Perfect. Yeah, just, so if you yeah. do make any other changes, just yeah. give it to us prior to June 5th. Sounds good. Okay. So do you s eventually just want to condition that the erosion controls yeah. get? Yeah. I can, you want me to leave this copy with you, Amy? You mentioned it. It's color coded. The color one. I love the colors. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you. Sure. All right, we have our bylaw. Yeah. Right, thank you. So we will see you on <laughs> June fifth. Well, hopefully you won't see me on. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with All right, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next on the agenda, eight twenty project update, Chestnut Lot. 12 and lot 13. He had a conflict, so couldn't come in, and he had nothing new to report anyway, and expects to be in in two weeks with a wall design. Nice. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's exciting. The wall and hey, maybe in. a whole new house. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we have done all the administrative. Does anything? anybody have anything else to add? Oh, was uh, I said to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A discussion topic I got buried there was um apparently some brush cutting along um, Long Lake uh, and somebody wrote to me saying uh, particularly a bunch of knotweed piled up on the water side of Lakeshore Birch Road near a utility pole and knotweed was not previously growing in that area that means little Somebody's bits might yeah. grow now uh oh so Has also been, having been removed not that I know of, no. It's it's. And who, did, who did the brush clean? Like like some private person was doing it. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, yeah. we don't know who who did it. Oh, yeah. um, hmm. And uh, so they asked if the conscom would ask the town to collect and properly dispose of it, or she would take it to the dump. But uh, she knew that it couldn't be composted, um, and it shouldn't go in the trash compactor. So um, anyway. Anything the commission can do to address this, she asks. What do you want to do? Do you want to forward it on? So yeah. how, how large a pile of now we There are see. several piles. Well, and not, she didn't say, a bunch. A bunch. Mm. I mean, best case, it would be put in black plastic bags. Yeah. And have to sit out in the sun for a while. And then you do anything you want to do it. Right, right. What, I mean, we could pile it onto or move it onto a, uh, some sort of tarp. Yeah. You want it enclosed, though? Uh. Um, I mean, I could I could forward this to Jim Clyde and see if he'd be willing to pick it up because they did pick up some brush when after we did the lake cleanup they picked up brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so we okay. could ask him to do that. I'm gonna ask him to do that, and then if he can't do that, then we'll find some alternatives. What okay. does he do with it? I actually, I should ask him what he does <laughs> with the basics. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Probably. <laughs> so I mean, what I did we. we no, because they, 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 they have a whole invasive species monitoring program going on, apparently. Okay. Well, when we so. removed invasives from the wetland park before, I did lay out a tarp. I put all the knotweed on the tarp and just let it all, f dry. like, dry completely. Yeah. And then we took it off. So. Do you want to ask him if he can do that? If not. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll forward this to him and ask him. Okay. Please, okay. please. <laughs> please. Please, please. Okay. Anyone have anything else? Right. No, nope, nothing really. I'm still right. working on getting Peter's bench, but I'll have an update on that at the next meeting. Do you want to make a? And I, I, I mentioned that to to Jim and um, um, Chris. Thank you. Um, and I mean, they weren't wildly enthusiastic, and I wasn't totally sure what was needed for the for the footing and all that stuff. Yeah. So when you have a bad idea, you might want to talk to him directly because you have the information. Mm. I wasn't sure who was picking it up and. We've got to look into it. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You definitely have to have a, a foundation, though, I think, just because somebody can tip it over or Snow steal it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. All right. Do I have a motion to close the oh, Wait. I, sorry. I have nope. one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, the Long Lake Neighbors Association is arranging for an invasive species um, training cool. uh, by DCR. They come and they 
uh, do an identification class, and you that's where they bring the plants with them. Yeah, yeah, the aquatic, yep. aquatic yeah. Uh, uh, invasives. So uh, if anybody, I, I don't know, I was thinking that maybe, maybe of letting can the, you email that to everyone? Yeah, I'll okay. email it to everybody. Uh, and I'd, let, date uh, I'd let Elsie Littleton uh, Conservation Trust know yep. about it. What's the date on that? Well, we don't know yet. It's okay. going to be a, um, a a day in in June, okay. um, probably an evening in June okay. after six or, or at six. Um, okay. So yeah. I'll I will forward that when the date is established. So I'll let people know. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That might be something to put on the website too. Mm. Oh, now I have another thing. <laughs> so, so we had the uh, Hidden Treasures event over at Browdy Woods this past Saturday and. It was a great event, and a lot of people went. So okay. that's oh. nice. That's okay. yeah. That um, did you go on the edible walk and things like that? I had that? to work that day, so oh. it was terrible. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you have a motion to close. I'll make a motion to close the meeting at, at seven. Nine, no, at nine, nine, seven six. after nine. <laughs> nine oh seven. That's Second. the earliest we've been yeah, in a while. <laughs> We will gather these up. Oh. Big wires. Mm -hmm.